Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fundamentals of Air Breathing Propulsion Engines course that we are creating at engineertomorrow.org. My name is Raul Otero Jr. and today we're going to be discussing the types of air breathing aircraft engines and their users. uses. Um, so to get started, I first wanted to talk about uh, what do air breathing aircraft engines do? This is an essential question to understanding why things are designed a certain way. So in order to answer that question, we'll first look at an airfoil used on the wing of an aircraft. So the purpose of an aircraft is to fly and get us to a different place. So the way that that happens is we have incoming air that affects the airfoil. And from Bernoulli's principle, we have an upper streamline and a lower streamline. And um, the lower streamline actually goes uh, slightly slower than the upper streamline, causing a higher pressure at the bottom and a lower pressure at the top which produces a lift force in the upward direction. So uh, in order to fly an aircraft, the aircraft must first accelerate to a certain speed in order to fly. Now you can use uh, wheels to accelerate you to that speed, but then once you get in the air, you lose your acceleration mechanism. So uh, the way that that's done is we use the uh, a gas turbine engine or an air breathing engine in order to produce that thrust, which moves us through the air. Uh, while we are in flight because we have no traction with the ground. So uh, when we do get to flying, um, there are two different forces that have to be dealt with. Actually, there are three. The first one is the lift force. So the lift force is a function of the velocity of the vehicle, the area of the airfoil, and this coefficient and, de and the density of the air. So the coefficient is just a function of the design of the uh, airfoil itself. So using all these variables, uh, we can identify what is necessary to fly, uh, and this lift force has to counteract the effects of gravity, which includes, includes the entire aircraft's weight. So you can imagine that there has to be a specific velocity that we have to reach in order to fly the aircraft. The other force is the drag force. So when you are flying through the air, there is a lot of air resistance that is counter uh, or go, going against the aircraft moving forward. So it's kind of restricting the movement of the vehicle, which is a function of similar parameters. So the velocity, the area of the, uh, the object that's flying through the air, the density of the air, and the coefficient, which is a function of the, of the design of the aircraft itself. So um, the, the force that counteracts the effects of drag is the thrust, and that thrust is produced by the aircraft engine. So if we want to accelerate the aircraft, we have to uh, overcome this drag force. Okay, so uh, here I just wanted to show you a free body diagram of the aircraft just to highlight the, the major forces that are going on. We have the, uh, the lift force, which is uh, a function of the these parameters over here, and so is the drag, which is going against the direction of the aircraft traveling. So in this case, the aircraft is traveling to the left. We have the thrust force, which counteracts the effects of the drag force, and the gravitational force, which has to be overcome by the lift force. So uh, to summarize, the air breathing engine produces thrust, which enables the aircraft to fly. And that's the main purpose of these air breathing engines, which we are discussing in this course. So next, I'll talk about the four major types of air breathing engines. So we'll start out with the turbojet engine. So the turbojet engine it com is comprised of a compressor section, which is over here in the front of the uh, engine itself. We have a combustor, and then we have a, uh, a turbine section. So I'll, I'll talk in the next couple slides about which, which one of these component, what each of these components do. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys the difference of the differences between the different types of air breathing engines. So uh, this type of engine was uh, recently, or not recently, but um, most commonly known for its application in the Concorde itself. Uh, and this was a vehicle that flew at about Mach 2, I believe, uh, and it was optimized for that type of performance. So it was a very high speed application for this Concorde. The next one that we're going to talk about is the turboprop engine. So turboprop engines are, to think of it simply, basically a, sorry about that, that was my dog. Um, it's basically a turbojet engine which is attached to a reduction gearbox through a shaft, 
And then that reduction gearbox moves a giant propeller, which you can see at the front, at a certain speed, and that allows the aircraft to move through the air. So by using the propeller, you move more air, and it allows you to uh, move through the air more efficiently at lower speeds. Okay, the next one is a turbofan engine, and the turbofan engine is very similar to the turboprop engine, but it does not have a reduction gearbox as you see here. Um, so it's just a big fan which is ducted. So there's actually two ducts, the core duct and the bypass duct, and some air goes through each of those ducts. And essentially, you can think of this core section as a turbojet in its operation. And the fan acts as the propeller does in the turboprop case. But it is designed for more efficient operation at uh, slightly higher speeds than the turboprop, um, but still lower than the turbojet operation. And the final one that we're going to talk about is the ramjet. Um, you can also think of the scramjet. And these types of engine use uh, specific designs in order to affect the properties of the air or the thermodynamics of the air. Uh, which enables the use of the engine for uh, flight. So you compress the air in a certain way by using a specific geometry of the inlet, and um, you expand the air, or yeah, you you extract the air from the engine uh, using a different geometry uh, in order to produce that thrust. So I'll be talking about those in the next couple of slides. Okay, so this is a summary of the four major types of air breathing engines. Um, okay, let's go to the next slide. So again, let's go back and look at the turbojet engine. And as I mentioned, the turbojet is generally used for slightly higher speeds than the turboprop and the turbofan, uh, as, no as denoted by the use in the Concorde at a Mach, to Mach 2 application. So as I said, there is a compressor section, which is just a bunch of blades arranged in a specific geometry to raise the pressure of the incoming air. Then there is a combustion chamber in which fuel is introduced and the um, and heat is added to the system. Uh, and, an, and this is typically known as an isobaric process, although there are some changes in the pressure due to uh, pressure losses through the duct. And then the turbine, which is behind the combustion chamber, is used to extract some of the energy from the inflowing air in order to move the compressor. So these are attached in the same shaft. So as the air, as, as air energy is extracted from the turbine, it is used to move the compressor. Um, so it's a self-sustained process once you get it going. Okay, and then uh, after it gets out of the turbine, there's still some energy left in the flow uh, and it's still at a slightly higher pressure. So the nozzle uh, reduces the pressure to the ambient pressure and it is emitted out the back, and the nozzle is used to accelerate the flow more because the, the force of the thrust is a function of the mass flow rate and the differences between the uh, velocity at the inlet and the exit. So um, you want to maximize that difference as much as possible to produce more thrust, and that's uh, one of the major purposes of the nozzle geometry. Okay, so next we have the turboprop engine, and like I said, these are used for low speed applications, so still lower than the turbofan applications. And like I said, there is the turbine components, which you see here, the compressor, the combustor, and the turbine and the nozzle, um, whichever geometry that may be. But there is a gearbox, which is a reduction gearbox. And the purpose of this gearbox is to reduce the speed of rotation of this giant propeller. Okay. So, like I said, essentially a turbojet attached to a gearbox slash propeller system. And the reason that the turboprop is used at low speeds is because um, you have this giant propeller. So, as this propeller rotates, the, uh, the parts of the propeller that are on the extreme, so at the tip of the propeller, are moving at a lot higher speed than the ones that are near the uh, center of the propeller. Okay, so when you have that, that uh, the, the tips of the propeller could actually go supersonic, which introduces a lot of inefficiencies in operation at high speeds. So as you increase the airflow speed uh, and then you have a higher velocity tip, that produces a lot of losses due to shocks and things like that. 
So, uh, like I said, the prop tip could go supersonic if you go too high, and that reduces efficiencies. Um, and then one other note I wanted to add here is that uh, these do have these large gearboxes at the front of the uh, the engine itself. And like we looked at, the drag force uh, is a function of the geometry. So this gearbox introduces a lot more drag, um, and it's not as efficient. So uh, that's why some companies like Pratt & Whitney are using the geared turbofan type configuration, um, because there's a lot of efficiencies in terms of the propulsive efficiency, which you can get from having this giant propeller essentially at the front. Um, but you have to you have to control the losses due to uh, the airspeed itself. So there's a lot of trade trade backs that are, or uh, trade offs, sorry, between different types of designs. So the next one that we're going to be talking about is the turbofan engine. And the turbofan engine is interesting because although it does have the components of the turbojet, you know, the combustor, the compressor, and the turbine, sometimes uh, you don't want the fan to be rotating at the same angular velocity as the uh, components that are inside of the engine itself. So they have these things called uh, low pressure and a high pressure stage. Um, so you can have a low pressure compressor and a high pressure compressor and a low pressure, or high, sorry, high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine. Um, and these are allowed to rotate at different velocities and the low pressures are connected through this shaft that goes between the high pressure shaft. Um, and you use that in order to move different sections at different speeds. And like I said, you want to have the fan moving at a slightly slower rotational velocity to avoid those losses associated with um, supersonic tip speeds and uh, shock losses. And the flow goes through a core section and a bypass section. Okay, so there are two airstream uh, sections of this aircraft, or this aircraft engine. And uh, these are generally used for mid-speed application. So uh, what I mean by mid-speed is approximately Mach 0.8. Um, you could think of the the large uh, aircrafts that you see nowadays, like the 787 and the uh, Airbus A380. And those are using turbofan engines because they're very efficient at those velocities. And they're not going supersonic, so um, this is the optimal engine to use for that scenario. Okay, and like I said, large fan is attached to a gerbo, or turbojet style shaft to increase propulsive efficiency, which we'll talk about in future uh, videos. There's often multiple compressor and turbine stages to reduce that fan speed, and there are similar limitations to the turboprop system. Okay, so next we'll talk about the ramjet slash scramjet engine types. Uh, the picture you see here is actually a ramjet engine, and these types of engines are used for really high speeds because at certain speeds you can use the geometry of the inlet and the exhaust section of these engines in order to produce thrust. So as the air comes in through this, uh, through the front of the engine, um, it's actually decelerated to a uh, subsonic condition. So uh, Mach less than one, and that raises the pressure of the air coming in. And then you have these flame holders, which uh, serve as your effectively comb combustion chamber, uh, which adds heat to the system. And then using specific geometry, uh, you can further accelerate the flow to a supersonic condition. So you have a converging diverging nozzle and the exhaust is greater than one again. Um, and there is a velocity difference between the two sections. and um, as I said, the thrust is a function of the mass flow and the velocity differences, so uh, it's able to produce thrust in this in this way. Now, the difference between ramjets and scramjets is just the uh, the Mach number of the compression that occurs. So, while ramjets go subsonic in the compre compression process, uh, the scramjets do not. So they have a slightly different geometry, but you can think that the geometry is serving the purpose of the compressor and the turbine parts of the turbojet. And these are used for really high speeds. So uh, again, just to summarize, the ramjets and scramjets use inlet and exit geometry to compress and accelerate the air. 
the ramjet operates at uh, com combustion occurs at subsonic speeds while the scramjet combustion occurs at supersonic speeds and um basically if you want to go higher than this you're probably going to look at a rocket type application um so scenarios where the uh, like you know in space you don't have air coming in so you can't use that for the combustion process so you'll need a rocket and have onboard um, propellant eff effectively so as a brief review of what we talked about today you should know uh, what the different types of air breathing aircraft engines are those are the turbojet turboprop turbofan and the ramjet slash scramjet also you should understand uh, when each type of engine is used so i want to summarize that again the turboprops are used for typically low speed applications and again that's because of the tips of the propeller you don't want to go supersonic with those and introduce losses so generally they're used for subsonic applications the turbofan is much like the turboprop uh, except you don't have that reduction gearbox or before you didn't maybe pratt and whitney will introduce that gearbox um, and these are typically used for mid-speed applications so mach 0.8 and those are around the uh, the current speeds that the aircrafts nowadays are flying at because it's most efficient. And typically those are su subsonic as well. Although you can have a supersonic turbofan, it's not as efficient. The next one is the turbojet, which is uh, the workhorse of the previous two. But um, in terms of speed, it can go much higher in speed than the turbofan and the turboprop. And uh, like I said, these are... Uh, these can be used in subsonic and supersonic applications. And the fourth one is the ramjet and scramjet, uh, which is used for really high speed. So when you can use the the ram air or the, and the geometry of the engine itself in order to uh, perform the thermodynamic process um, in order to produce thrust. So uh, that's all we're going to be talking about today. Um, Please let me know if you had any questions, and uh, the next time we're going to be talking about calculating thrust uh, for propulsion engines. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please let me know if you have any questions, and that is all. I'll talk to you guys next time.